God, I just can't with the internet today. I came across this video that is causing an absolute stir saying that your mental health illness may not be even real and that it's all a conspiracy based on the insurance companies and mental health care providers in order to get paid. We're going to dive into it today and see if this is true or if it's absolute garbage. So the video in question is from a creator, Dan Henschel. And if you haven't seen him before, uh, this is this is him. And I'll just let the video play. And then we need to have a discussion because this this shakes some things for me mental illness might not be real. Psychology as a science is only about one to 200 years old. Medical science has been around since 3000 BC. When medical science was as old as psychology is now, we still thought animal sacrifices cure diseases. We in the mental health industry have no clue why anything is the way that it is or what to do about it. But we have to have something to tell the insurance companies so that they'll pay for all of our stuff. So we made up a bunch of mental disorders based on things we noticed people had in common. We're doing the best that we can. So don't ever let your diagnosis define you because it's just a guess. <gasps> Uh, so here's here's the thing I little clickbaity in the beginning because I'm like this is gonna shake things this is this is the stupidest thing that I've ever heard in my damn life and and if you don't know Dan Henschel a lot of people don't and they're passing this video around and it's just popping off like hotcakes you know what I'm saying but if you don't know Dan Henschel he's a meme account he's a parody account and he's intentionally explosive and and controversial in ways to get attention like He's honestly, when it comes to social media and it comes to viral content, just just absolute genius. But uh, he stoops to a level that I would never be comfortable stooping to because he makes you question things that really are bad for your mental health. So here's the thing. It, let's break this down just so you can understand, first of all, that he's not a therapist. He's not a part of psychology. He makes a lot of mental health content. But if you check out like his profile and uh, pages like Know Your Meme, Here's Know Your Meme page about Dan Henschel. Uh, he is a comedian, creator, influencer. Dan Henschel, also known on TikTok and Instagram by the username Dan Henschel, refers to a parody artist on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter who posted therapy-related content and life advice. In 2023, Dan Henschel became a viral topic and meme mainly due to a video he posted titled I Hate Being a Therapist. And that one, it was brilliant because he noticed different therapists getting canceled online for making these silly videos about like, I mean, not silly videos. It's like, honestly, really cringy and really unsettling the things that they were saying about their clients. And so he saw how viral those went. So he's like, I'll pretend to be a therapist and I'll make viral content where I just yell about my clients. And here's, here's the video that just like, I wish I knew how many, it's I me. Mean, it's got 3.3 million likes. I don't know the views. Someone can check it, put it in the comments, but this is what he says, right? I hate being a therapist! Ah! All day, all day, I just have to listen to people complain about their stupid problems and I just want to be like, shut up! Nobody cares! This is the only honest advice you're ever going to get from a therapist. Get over it! So, so there's that. So there's that. <clears throat> He's not a therapist. But, I mean, it just exploded because he hit on a nerve with people and and here he is doing it again hitting on a nerve with people so we've got to go through and break this down first things first he talks about the psychology profession has only been around for the past 200 years kind of true like 1800s yes is about is about the right time i mean we've been dealing with people's mental health and we've had religious and spiritual centers to deal with people's mental health since before then but let's let's just take it. Sure, I'll, I'll concede that point just for the sake of argument. It's it's a false way of arguing about these things. That's like saying we can't trust the study of oncology or, you know, cancer treatment because that hasn't been around since 3000 BC. Psychology is a part of the medical profession. So psychology is wrapped into that 3000 BC year history. It's not like it's this new thing that we invented. It's not true at all. I mean, as we've gone through our medical history as human beings and learned how to treat and cure other people of ailments and disorders that they may be experiencing psychology is a part of that process and it's a development it's not a separate thing so to say that we can't trust psychology because it hasn't been around as long as the medical profession is making a false split that is not appropriate to make again it's like saying you know because uh because glasses 
you know, eyeglasses haven't been around since 3000 BC. Well, we just, we're just making this shit up. You know, we can't, we can't trust eyewear because that's newer. Or like, um, I don't know. I think cancer treatment's a great one. I think uh, we could talk about, geez, hormones, right? We've learned a lot about hormones and how they can help people express themselves, how they can really regulate both our digestion, our metabolism, and our emotions. And so we've used those. Do we just throw hormones out? Because that's that hasn't, hasn't been around for as long, so it's akin to animal sacrifices? Of course not. That's absolute, absolutely ridiculous. But then he goes on to say that they made these things up. No, they're, they're not made up. They're, <laughs> the way that this has been created, and there are some flaws in the system, just like there's some flaws in the medical system, <clears throat> but it's not even flaws that I think you should be concerned about. I mean, sure, there's some argument about... You know, we keep trying to refine our process as psychologists, but let me get to the point. The problem is, you can see I'm a little bit heated. The problem is, <clears throat> these are real. Your mental health condition, your diagnosis, your assessment is very helpful for understanding yourself. The way that we've come about these things is we've studied human beings and the way that they behave. Now, every mental health diagnosis, in order to be a diagnosis, has to meet one very important criteria, and it seems like people don't understand this. The important criteria that it has to meet is it has to affect you enough to where you are not able to complete basic tasks. You're not able to hold a job. You're not able to take care of yourself. And you're not able to engage in healthy, sustainable relationships. All of these different mental health diagnoses are assigned because they are at a severity for that person to where it affects their ability to operate in a normal, healthy way. So anxiety, we all get nervous, that's normal. The distinction, the defining line is, some people have anxiety so much that they're not able to perform basic daily living tasks, like taking care of themselves, maintaining relationships, and holding a job. That's when we diagnose F41.1, generalized anxiety disorder. Depression, some people get sad. That's a normal and beautiful human emotion that helps us experience life authentically. However, some people are so sad that they can't enjoy their life, they are hopeless, they can't hold a job, and they can't engage in healthy relationships. So F32.1, major depressive disorder. That's how we're diagnosing these things. And so there is a very important line, and therapists go to school for an incredible amount of time. Four years bachelor's degree, two and a half years graduate school, two years practicum internship, then sitting for the test, to so just to be barely legal to see a client. And so there's all of this education that goes around being able to know where that line is. Of course, we still make mistakes, just like there are medical errors with surgery and even medical errors with prescription of uh, <clears throat> antibiotics, right? So it's like, of course, there's human error in here, but to throw out the whole field of psychology, <clears throat> God, Jesse, you got to take a breath. It's a bit of a personal affront to me. I have spent my life studying this, and I love it because it's starting a great conversation. I, I mean, I mean, no anger towards Dan. Um, I I cringe a little bit because I know the damage that this can do, making people doubt their mental health conditions, their mental health diagnoses, and kind of second guess themselves. It's not worth second guessing yourself. I think it's great to continue to explore yourself and not just to assume things. Like it's a constant journey of self exploration. However. I do appreciate Dan bringing this up because having this conversation and having this video, I think will give you some knowledge about where's the line, why we trust psychology, and how you can validate yourself and your experience when it comes to mental illness or just your personal life experience because you're an individual and unique human being. So what do you think? <laughs> Put it in the comments down below. Please let me know. If you got any questions, hit me up in the Discord channel. All of that's there. And most importantly, hit subscribe. I'd love to help you out with your dreams, mental health content, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.